welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You'll also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. Hi, I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we will feature John Schlitt. The extraordinary lead singer started with a secular band, Head East, and that led him to fronting the legendary Christian rock band, Petra. 16 albums later, he now brings us the song, Just Reach Out. Sometimes the night seems to go on for days When it's hard to see the light Through the darkness and haze While the world around us makes you feel out of place And the burdens that you carry are just too hard to face Just reach out, he'll reach in Take your broken heart Just reach out, he'll reach in, ooh, yeah, yeah. Standing in a crowd, still all alone, crying out for answers that nobody knows. Everybody's busy. Not for themselves Is there anyone who really cares About anyone else Just reach out He'll reach in Take your broken heart Make it whole again It don't matter who you are Or where you've been Just reach out He'll reach out Steps away, but don't you know that it's only one step back? Because the one who hears you when you pray is the one who's there beside you and never walk away. Just reach out, he'll reach you, take your broken heart. Just reach out. I 
could see I was wrong to keep on living like this life and live won't cost me at all. I wish I knew then what I know now cause it cost me to fall. Whoa. There's hard times when you realize there must be something better than this hollow life. Sometimes the grass it is a greener on the other side. Yeah. My life ain't over, I'm just turning around. I heard the word and the spirit cry out. Take me home. I've been away so long. See, I was wrong. I was wrong. There's no one's fault but my own. No. I want to go back home. Go back home. Yes. Come on. All right. second chances cause every time I turn away you understand and if it wasn't for your love I'd never make it cause now I stand here as a healed and broken man my life ain't over I'm just turning around I heard the words and the spirit cry out take me That voice has been heard on millions of albums around the world. But John is known as a man who lives for Jesus, and he makes no bones about his faith. He says his music will always be a reflection of God's love. Recently, Terry Black sat down with John to get a glimpse of his fascinating story. Okay, John, I have so, much, so many questions to ask you. And, and one of the things, you are a tenor singer. Mm -hmm. You know, that is an accomplishment in itself. I Not mean, if God gives it to that's you. That's true. I mean, that is true. I mean, that's a gift that God gave you. Yeah. And he gave you this gift when you were but a mere child. So tell us, like, when you started to sing. I started singing when I was five years old mm -hmm. um, in kindergarten. And I got an S plus, the only boy that got an S plus <laughs> in music. So apparently I must be a singer. Yeah. <laughs> and then as time went on through, through school, um, we would, my little school had two classes for each class. And okay. we'd have a play. Uh, in, right. during the, and in between those two plays of each class, we'd have uh, the class would get together and sing. And I was always the guy that did the lead. So there I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm a singer. Yeah. So, but never thought that much of it and uh, was typical boy, like play basketball and baseball right. and this kind of stuff. Until my buddy gets a guitar, starts to learn how to play guitar. I go, I want to do that. That's, that looks like fun. And so I grabbed a guitar and we learned, we went to the same teacher and finally we went, that teacher sent us to his teacher. And oh. so we, we learned pretty quickly. Uh-huh. And then we learned enough to be dangerous. We started our own band. Okay, and when you were 13. When I was 13. Cool, yes. that's and, pretty good. And so, um, uh, actually the band did well for, uh, you know, it uh, ended up being one of the most successful bands in that part of the, of the state. Really? Yeah, before I was even out of high school. And, and you weren't a Christian at the time, oh, were you? No, 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 no. Okay. no. Right. Although I will say that our problem was my mother was a Catholic, my dad was a Lutheran. Okay. We, did we believe in God? Absolutely. Right. But the religious side of it was a gigantic battle. It almost split up our family. Oh, my. And because of that, my parents said, when you get old enough, John, you choose the church you want to go to, which was really wise. 
but as a kid, it meant I'm sleeping in on Sundays. <laughs> so uh, although I prayed to God every, mm -hmm. every night, uh, mm -hmm. did I know who God was? I'm, uh, I knew the, the Father. I didn't know the Son. Okay. And mm -hmm. so um, as time went on, I, I graduated from high school and I had to break the band up. So oh, I went into college. Right. And I, I did really well my freshman year and because uh, I wasn't in music. Mm -hmm. But I started finding music, and music oh, found me. And that's your passion. Apparently mm -hmm. so. I didn't realize it, but they mm -hmm. did. And I ended up finding a band that later on became Head East. Okay. And Head East was my first uh, national band. It okay. was a secular band, and, and we had our first record was a success. Pretty, actually very successful. With a song on it called Never Been Any Reason, which is a classic now. Okay. And because of that, I toured every major tour that was happening in that time period. And uh, really, it was a Cinderella story for a, for a rock singer. Okay. And the problem with that is, is you get your dream completed. Uh -huh. And it really was every musician's dream to do what I was doing. But I was doing it every day, every wow. night. Wow. And it got to a point where, believe it or not, even when you're doing your dream, it gets old. Mm -hmm. And then you start looking for the next excitement. Mm. And then all of a sudden, booze started coming in a little bit okay. too much. And then finally, cocaine came into my life, and it totally took hold of me. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is a guy that came from a little town. I have no excuses. Had a wonderful family, uh, 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 great upbringing, mm -hmm. and even went into music saying, I wasn't going to get hooked. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to do that. I did. Uh, the pressures, the peer pressure behind the stage and all that, just to... Uh, put me right in with everyone else or mm. I shouldn't I shouldn't speak for everyone but right. the norm was especially for a party band like like Head East it was pretty much that mm -hmm. which in in turn uh, just about destroyed my life to the point mm. where I got fired from Head East you did yeah 1980 wow. I got fired because I was such a basket case mm. um, and that's pretty hard to get fired by guys who also are doing it but apparently I was Worse. The extreme. Okay. And so when they fired me, I was going to show them I didn't need them. I was going to start my own band. And really, for the next six months, it was just an excuse to stay totally coked up or drunk 24 hours a day for six months. Wow. At the end of that six month period, I, it was the 29th of August of 1980, which was the morning after my, my wedding anniversary. And I remember it because I woke up on the couch. Mm -hmm. and with my one-year-old son looking at me with a look on his face going, what's wrong with you, Dad? Oh, wow. And little voice goes, you know, John, you're worth more dead than alive. And wow. I accepted that. I said, yeah, that totally makes sense. So what was the turning point after that? Well, during that same six-month period, mm -hmm. my wife gets saved, oh. and it would tick me off. <laughs> Every time I came home with my pity party, she'd be happy as a lark. She'd come home from these Bible studies and church and mm. just all happy. And I'm going, I'd make the mistake of saying, what world are you living in? Mm. And she'd say, I'm glad you asked. And she'd start to tell me about Christ and I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow it. And she was wise enough to say, okay, in God's timing, in God's timing. She kept saying, in God's timing. Mm. So when I'm sitting on my chair after finally getting off the couch, because I had, I had been so drunk Right. that I missed our, uh, our anniversary party. Um, I sat in the chair and my two kids, my five-year-old daughter and my one-year-old son are, are playing in the, in the living room because I was there. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, okay, I'm not going to use a gun. Too messy. I don't want these kids to see that. And I started sitting, thinking about what kind of combination of pills that could be wow. the quickest and the most painless. And about that time, my wife taps me on the shoulder and says, Now, remember, you promised you'd come and talk to my pastor tonight. I said, When? He says, Last night when you were drunk. Oh, wow. So instead of going, Ah, there's the answer, I said, I thought to myself, All right, I'll go so she can remember I tried. Mm. So I went with no qualms about the fact that I, was, I knew what I was going to do. Right. And just to get her off my, uh, and she'd been asking me forever, I was going to do it to let her know that. Right that I appreciated her trying. Mm -hmm. Went and talked to the pastor and I did not know what was coming. Wow. I, I, the pastor goes, John, do you know, know Christ? Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I know Christ. I go to church twice a year. Uh -huh. uh, Christmas and, and uh, uh, Easter. Yeah. Oh, 
and the pastor goes, you don't know Christ. You don't oh, know the Christ that loves what? you. You don't know the Christ that has a plan for your life. You don't know the, you don't know the Christ that, that knows exactly what you're doing right now. Hmm. And I'm going. And by the time it was over, I was sitting in a couch. Now, I, for years I said I was sitting on the floor in the corner. <laughs> My okay. wife just recently told me that's not how it happened. So uh -huh. I'm, I'm changing my story. Sitting on the couch, mm -hmm. I couldn't speak. They come up to me, you want to know Christ? I said, I shook my head yes. Awesome. And that's all I could do. Wow. And so that obvious time was a life changer changed, for you. It, absolutely. And it propelled, it laid a foundation for you to become the lead singer for Petra. It took me five years. Five years. Five years. From the time I got mm -hmm. saved till the time I got Petra. And that was a very important mm -hmm. because I had to get into the Word. Mm -hmm. I had to be a strong, I had to have a strong foundation and God knew it to step in the, in the shoes to carry the, the, the weight of, of Petra's lead singer. Right. Well, Petra was a phenomenal band. It, it, you said you were with them for 20, almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, sure and it was a Christian band with many mm -hmm. accolades. And, and you were at the beginning of the Christian music, right? At that time, wasn't there like a lot of contemporary Christian music just starting to? There seemed to be a lot going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, when I first joined them, uh, up till that time, I, I, until I found that Petra existed, I didn't listen to Christian music okay. because it was all. It was Amy Grant, uh, uh, Sandy Patty, uh, and I. I got to know the girls, and they're sweethearts. I, I would listen to them any time of the day now, but back then I came from a rock, rock mm -hmm. uh, venue, and uh, I liked exciting music, and that mm -hmm. was just. It was just too mellow. Right. Then Petra came along. Somebody handed me a Petra record. I said, "Oh my gosh, that's what I should have been doing." <laughs> And, but I just figured it was too late for me because I'd used my voice in such a negative way. God, God could never use me. Wow. But, you know, it's typical. You think you know God's plan, you never do. And just like he has used your past and to, and to help you in Petra, and now as in Petra, it propelled you for something in the future too and for your present. You know, 2020 is, is uh, uh, hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. And watch how God used seven, eight years of getting me into uh, the skill I needed to be and five years to get me into the Word was an amazing. It was mm. like, I see your plan now, God. Thank you. Oh, wow. And, you know, the, the 20 years of Petra was, was amazing. Mm -hmm. We did see a lot of changes in, in Christian music, in contemporary Christian music. Uh, right at the time, I did get part of Petra just as things were starting to, to mm -hmm. explode. And because of that, um, oh, my gosh, uh, all over the world, we uh, traveled all over the world. We did, yeah. we did uh, stadiums um, because it was God's plan. Mm. And uh, it was exciting. The churches accepted us. Mm. Uh, some churches, yeah. some didn't. That's right. But, but it, was, it was wonderful to watch how there would be churches that would gather, gather together and we'd do a con concert in a neutral area. Not any church, but right. in a... And okay. they would all join together and work as a team. And we see council of people, countless people come forward. That's and great. it was it was a wonderful time. That's, and you know, as I as we're wrapping up our time together, mm -hmm. and you know, we're talking with new artists coming up. Yes. And some of the things that makes me consider what you said is that you got to know God's plan for your life. Yes. And what else would you recommend for an artist that is just, they think that this is what God wants them to be, Christian rock and roll. As Bob and I have always said, be content with small things in the beginning, mm -hmm. or if, if, just be content. Be content where God puts you. Mm -hmm. Do your best, work hard. Uh, always give God 110%. Mm. Never ever say, it's Christian, that's good enough. Oh, wow. That's, that's a great way. To, that's really good for all of us to Amen. remember, just not musicians. Thank you, John. My pleasure. It's been, it's been a pleasure to be able to talk with you and, and learn more about who you, you are. Thank you for letting me share my heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I'm going to like you guys real good. All right.
Thank you for watching More Than a Song. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer. Until next week, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the new song, He Sings Over You. I'm Denise Graves and I'll see you next week. Next